It's getting a little chilly out there. Did they build a fire to keep you warm outside there? Good, good. I heard you just been hearing about the Chickamacomico races story. Now you, I, I assume you all around here to learn about the Civil War. Yes, the Civil War, also known as the War Between the States, or as some local people like to call it, the recent unpleasantness. <laughs> Finally. Mm -hmm. Or as some others refer to it as just the war. We all know what war we're talking about when we say the war. Yes, well, Whatever you call it, it was a terrible, bloody conflagration that tore our young country apart. And you have no doubt heard, and we'll hear more stories tonight, about the war. And yet, there are more war stories that have been lost forever in the mists of time. So I want to be sure to tell you my war story tonight. But before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I am William Dawson. And when I was alive, I was an artist by profession. I painted portraits in this town. And when commercial photography became possible, I became Elizabeth City's first portrait photographer. Now, you have no doubt seen those old tintype photos of people who are standing up very very posed and stiff and looking generally miserable. Well, I took a many a dour photograph such as those. I tell you, it was genius the first time someone uttered the words, say cheese. Because <laughs> <laughs> folks look so much better when they're smiling. Well, when the war broke out, I joined up and became enlisted in the North Carolina 17th Regiment, Company L, also known as the State Guards of Pasquotank. And we were commanded by Captain John Bartlett Fury. Now, while in the Army, I wrote a long series of love letters to my sweetheart back here in town, Miss Nanny White. And those love letters, many of them still exist today in possession of Dawson family descendants because Nanny and I became husband and wife after the war. So our descendants have the love letters. My regiment was assigned to defend Fort Bartow, a very small fort on Roanoke Island out near where the Manteo Airport is now. On February the 8th, 1862, Confederate forces received Union troops who engaged us in the Battle of Roanoke Island. On the second day of the battle, I saw our standard bear fall. And I made a dive for our regimental flag and rescued it. We went on to lose the battle. And I was supposed to surrender our company colors to the enemy, but some instinct in me told me to hold on to the flag. The following day, we were all marched to a Union prison camp in Currituck County. And there I took great care to conceal the flag in the lining of my overcoat. Now, with paroles and prisoner exchanges, I was eventually, several months later, paroled out here in Elizabeth City. It was a very risky thing for a Confederate parolee in a Union-occupied town to be in possession of a Confederate battle flag. Tensions ran very high here between Union and Confederate sympathizers, and I might have been executed on the spot if my flag had been found. So I was in such a dilemma. What was I to do? Well, naturally, I gave the flag to my girlfriend. <laughs> no 
no sooner than I was discharged from the boats on the docks downtown, I surreptitiously conveyed the flag to my sweetheart, Nanny White. And Nanny, very capably, hid the flag in a feather mattress for the duration of the war. Now, after the war, the flag was dismantled and parts of it were given to Dawson family relatives. The flag was originally constructed by Miss Sophie Mark, who later started a school in Elizabeth City after the war. The flag had seven gold stars upon it, one for each of the seven Confederate states. And these were what were taken off and given away to family members after the war. The canton of the flag, or background of the flag, was a bright blue square that had the state seal of North Carolina painted upon it and the words, State Guards. Mm -hmm.